Okay, the first thing I'm going to show, demonstrate, is an extended body made with microfibits and thread. And this is done on a standard sewing needle. First thing we do is just lay down a thread base and extend it up the needle however large body you want and leave the tag end on. That'll give support to the thread. Hmm? Just bring this down to the end. Go ahead and select a couple micro fibbits. I'm just going to approximate the length of the body with the tails that I want extending. I'm just going to go ahead and apply those. And again, I'm not going to trim the tag ends of those microfibits. They're going to add stability to this body when we finish. Now I'm just going to go ahead and split these tails. It's not really important that you figure eight through them. When we finish this fly, the glue that we use will keep them in place. Now I'm just going to go ahead and create the desired taper. going to build this up with repeated wraps of thread. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and tie off my thread. we have the split tails on a taper body. Next thing I'm going to do is use a little soft hex. Go ahead and apply this. Now when this body starts to lose some of its shine, it indicates that that softex has been absorbed into the threads. And 
before it dries totally I'm going to use some needle nose pliers. I'm just going to run it down the shaft of the needle right up to the body. And pull it off. And in doing so, it ex kind of imparts a natural curvature to the to the body. And I'm just going to grab the micro fivet tails and the tag ends. Pull those out. Straighten out a little bit. If you pull the micro fivets and the tag end, you're not going to pull that thread apart. And that's how uh, one method of creating a uh, an extended body with thread and micro pivots. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and use this extended body and mount it on an umbrella hook. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay down a thread base. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this body and I'm going to use some pliers to crimp and flatten out where I'm going to tie this in. I'm going to offset this off. This thread torque will bring this up. Pretty fine. Go ahead and trim off this excess. And just get that nice and secure. Now for wings, I like to use hen hackle. I'm going to go ahead and select two hen hackles, hen hackles put them back to back. Just make sure to even up their tips. I have those nice and even. I'm going to go ahead and just lie it up there, kind of approximate the size I want, basically the length of the body. Go ahead and trim that off. Now, with these still back to back, I'm going to take these tips. I'm going to go ahead and lay them in and straddle the hook shank. I'm going to go ahead and take one loose wrap and cinch that up. And if they don't go on the first time, just give it another shot. Let's go ahead and prop them up and divide them. Now I'm going to take this thread, bring it in front of the 
wing closest to me through and behind the far my far ring and right up against the stem and if the thread's not moving that wing it's not close enough then I'm going to take one wrap in front to secure that I'm going to bring it up behind the wing nearest to me and again up against the stem position that if it's not moving it's not close enough and then another wrap in front having done that that's going to secure those wings then I can go ahead and come in and kind of trim off some of the excess Okay, and there's the wings. I'm just going to go ahead and take some super fine dubbing. I kind of break up the fibers a little bit. In these small patterns, it makes it a little easier to control the amount of dubbing you place on the thread. Go ahead and uh, begin at the eye, just start working my way back. Now I'm just going to take a couple wraps right underneath as I finish that off. So that's got the wings, dub thorax, and our extended body. Now I'm going to reposition this hook in the vise. The unique thing about these umbrella hooks is there's a little shank underneath the body and that's where we're going to place our hackle. I'm going to go ahead and just attach a hackle and I'm going to begin just bring that hackle up towards the body four wraps and then just tie that off I'm going to go ahead and s now finish this going to apply a, a whip finish between the hackle and the body. And one more time. And there we have a finished extended body fly on the umbrella hook. Okay, we're going to tie another umbrella hook.
pattern, but this time instead of the thread body, we're going to go ahead and make our extended body using a reverse feather. So I'm going to go ahead and use a, uh, a mallard feather. And we just reverse the, uh, the fibers on this feather. We're going to tie it in on the side of the hook. Take a couple light wraps. We're just going to go ahead and extend that out. Tie it down. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a few ra thread wraps under the excess and the eye to prop that up. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just trim that off and it makes a little head. Okay, we're going to use hand hackle again for wing. Even those tips up. And approximate the length by the body length. And then we're going to go ahead and straddle the hook with the two butt ends of those feathers. I'm going to go ahead and make one light wrap and secure it down. And then just stand those two wings up. One wrap behind the far wing and a wrap to secure that. And then against the, the near wing. And yeah, it's not really seated the way I'd like. And then we can just go ahead and trim off the excess fibers. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and apply some dubbing. I'm just going to go ahead and begin again at the eye. Build up a thorax. And then finish that with a couple wraps underneath the body. I'm going to go ahead and reposition this hook in the vise. And we're 
we're going to apply the hackle. Bring the thread back up underneath so it's right underneath the body. And we'll just begin wrapping this hackle towards the body. Secure that with a couple wraps. Trim off the excess. And then we're going to go ahead and apply a whip finish. And the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and separate these fibers on the tail. And there we have an umbrella pattern with a reverse feather. Okay, so the next pattern is a it's called a parish para loop, or goes by the name of hair hackle stacker as well. I'm going to start with just a uh, standard dry fly hook and I'm going to go ahead and lay down a thread base. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring this thread back just back to the bend and I'm going to make a little thread bump and bring it back up to about a third the way up the shank for tail I'm going to use some of these micro fivots and I like to use four and I'll split them two to a side So I'm just going to uh, approximate this for the total size of the hook. And tie it in and you can make a small adjustment. And I'm just going to go ahead and lash this down the top of the shank. I can wrap my thread back down to that thread bump. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use my fingernail and use that just to kind of splay those tails. And I'll bring the thread in between against those far two tails. One wrap in front to secure that. And I'm going to bring it behind the near and another thread in front and then I like to just bring one wrap underneath and that makes sure that they stay propped and there we have split tails those are in there securely for these patterns I like to use biot and you can do this with goose biot but I prefer turkey it's a little bit longer. It's the leading edge of the primary feather, flight feather. And the one thing with biots is you never want to cut them off the stem. You should always, always pull them off. Yeah. 
and when you pull it off you'll notice that a biot will have a little notch now if I tie this in with this notch facing towards the eye of the hook I'm going to get a, uh, an, a raised segmented appearance if I tie it the other way the body will be smoother and there will be a more subtle segmentation to it so I'm going to go ahead and tie this in by the tip and take one one wrap then I'm going to go ahead and prop this up about 90 degrees to the hook shank and go ahead and wrap this up to about a quarter of the way up the shank and I'm going to go ahead and uh, use some hackle pliers and I'm going to begin right at the uh, right at the back of the shank and go ahead and wrap this forward create a body and then I'll just tie this off and trim off the excess For this pair loop, it's it's similar to a parachute, the technique, but for a post, I'm going to go ahead and use some 7x monofilament. And I'm going to take maybe uh, oh six seven inches. I'm just going to go ahead and securely tie that down top back to the end of my uh, where my thorax is going to be and what I've got is I've got a loop now I'm going to go ahead and take a saddle hackle And I like to size the saddle hackle just like you would a standard parachute, about one size larger than the, the hook size would call for. This is about a size, oh, about a size 18. So I'm going to use about a size 16 hackle. I'm just going to secure that in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just begin to wrap this up that post. And I wanted about one and a half times the thorax. One and a half to two times. Depends on the density you're looking for. Then I'm going to begin to just wrap this back down through that hackle. Then when I get it down, I'm going to drop this feather over, lay back this hackle, and I'm going to go ahead and secure that with a couple wraps. Trim off that excess. So there I have, in essence, a, a post of hackle, and I'm going to leave that folded out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and dub, dub a thorax. So I'm going to just try and get as much of that feather out of the way and I'm going to go ahead at the back 
and start to wrap forward building up a nice thorax. You want to be sure to leave about a hook eyes enough room at the end there to uh, to be able to lash this down. Now the one nice thing about a pair loop is that you take this loop and then I'm going to go ahead and compress all that hackle by pulling on the two ends of this loop. That gives a nice compression. So I've got maybe eight to ten wraps of hackle that I've compressed down into the, a small area. The next thing is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go pull the hackle back out of the way and bring this loop towards the eye where I'm going to go ahead and secure it with just a couple wraps of thread. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this down and drape all of that hackle over that thorax. I'm going to change hands and while I apply tension I'm going to go ahead and tighten my thread down and that locks that in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab the hackle and that loop and I'm going to begin to wrap ahead and I'm going to wrap back over and double that monofilament and that locks it in place. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish that off. Cut off my thread. I'm going to come in here, trim off the monofilament, and there you have quill body pair loop and all that hackle it's going to float like a little cork okay the next pattern I'd like to show is the clink hammer I tie this using a 200 a Tiemco 200 hook and what you need to do is you need to place a band in the hook. I do that with a pair of pliers and then I just go ahead and put about a 30 degree band in it. That's what we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my thread. Now for the wing post on this clink hammer, I like to use a turkey uh, T-base feather, turkey flat actually, the T-base feather is about three inches long, this is a sh little bit shorter, but what you want to look for is a nice straight even edge that is full, as, as close to the uh, end as you can get. After you've stripped away all the fluff, you're left with, with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to trim out about a half inch, even up these tips. And that gives me a nice little piece of material that I can use as a post. I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the top of the shank back towards that elbow we created. And I'm going to go ahead build up a little thread dam. Just to stand that up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to kind of angle this trim off 
this and that gives me a little bit of a taper that will help me build up some bulk and a nice taper for the body. I'm just going to wind that down to the bend. And that just kind of gives you a nice subtle taper. And I'm going to go ahead and use a, a goo, uh, turkey biot. And again, I'm going to take this notch and I'm going to tie it in with this notch facing towards the eye of the hook. So I'm going to take one turn, rotate it about 90 degrees, and then just secure it in. And I'll bring the thread back up to that elbow. And I'm just going to go ahead and reposition this hook in the vise, makes it a little easier to wrap. And I'll just use some hack pliers. And then I'll go ahead and just begin to wrap this turkey biot up towards that elbow. And this is this is a pattern that you'd really uh, not be able to do in this size with a goose biot. They're just not large enough. Okay. And again, I'm going to reposition this back. And I'll take and I'll go ahead and trim off that excess. And just finish securing that down. I'm going to go ahead and make just a few wraps at the base of this wing post. Then I'm going to go ahead I'm going to take three pieces of peacock curl. I'm going to go ahead and tie these in by the tip. I like to wrap my peacock curl around the thread that just kind of reinforces it a little bit. Actually. Got ahead of myself here. Before I place that, I'm going to go ahead and put in the hackle that I'm going to use as a parachute um, hackle. Okay. Now I can go ahead and put in my peacock. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap and build a thorax with this peacock. Go ahead and tie that off. Now with a clink hammer, I like to tie my hackle a little bit opposite of what I would do for a traditional parachute. 
I like to use the concave side facing up. And that gives a bit of a V to the hackle that's going to be up. That's going to allow the body to suspend itself in the film or below the surface a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and take first wrap and then successive wraps will go underneath each other. And take about five wraps. Then I'm going to go ahead and just stroke as much of that hackle out of the way and finish it off. Trim that excess hackle out. And then just make a couple of whip finishes to finish this off. And that's the uh, Clink Hammer Special. Hopefully you can see how the hackle is angling up a little bit giving that body a little bit better opportunity to rest below the surface, which is what we want. Sorry, man. Okay. Did you get it? No.